we're going to go from this to this. Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to install the fly screen on the 2017 Yamaha FZ09. This may seem super simple, and it is, but the instructions are horrible. So I know this is probably going to help some people out. Now inside the box, you get the screen itself, you get a box of the hardware, and a little bit of edging that'll go on the screen, although that's optional. We do need a few tools, one or two you might have to go buy. You're going to need some blue thread locker, a Phillips screwdriver, a 5 mil hex key, and a step drill bit. Now this is something you may not have, and we need a 14 mil size. In equivalent SAE, that would be a 9 16 so it's like a 14.3, close enough for jazz. Now, this is quite expensive if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot. The cheapest one Home Depot had was $49.95. It's absolutely ridiculous. Went over to Harbor Freight, $5.99 for the exact same thing. So do not try to use a straight drill bit and wallow it out. These holes really do need to be very well centered. So that's why we need the step drill bit. We're going to be drilling through this stock cover coming off the bike and opening up these mounting holes. So it's very important to use. Super cheap, Harbor Freight, definitely go get one. First thing we have to do is remove this center cover off the bike itself. And wow, that was not even torqued on there at all. <laughs> Barely hand snug. Now when we take this off, there's an electrical connector that's just sitting on a post in the center. There's a post that goes into a rubber grommet right here that'll pop out of place. And then there's a little tab down at the bottom. We'll lift it peel it from the top and slide it out of the post and then off the tab there and just watch that electrical connector. Now we can lift the cover up, pop the post there out of the rubber grommet, slide it down a bit, catch that little tab out. And now we've got the electrical connector, which is hard for you guys to see because there's no real slack. All right, now the secret to this little electrical connection here there's a tab on the top of it, and it's a little hard to show here because I'm using one hand to hold my light. <laughs> it's really dark in there. You just push the tab in and then slide the whole connector up off the post. That's it. Now that we've got the cover off the bike, we need to open up these holes. We're gonna go to 14 mil or 9 16 on your standard drill bit. Mark the line so you know how far down to go and just drill slowly. You want to make sure that they stay centered in the holes and don't open them up too much. It's really all there is to it. It's not rocket science. Just above the line. That should be perfect at 14 mil. Now I'll do the other three. So now we can put the cowl back on the bike. We're gonna slide the electrical connector over the tab here until it clicks. Put the nose tab at the bottom in first. This post will go into the rubber grommet. This will be a little bit hard for you guys to see because it can only go in flat. Stand by. There we go, clicked in. Line the bottom tab. Post in the grommet. Bada bing, bada boom. Now we can put on our bottom brackets. There are two of them and they go in a very specific orientation. Notice they have two little tabs or feet. Those face the outside. And you'll notice it ramps up. The larger portion goes towards the top of the bike. So this particular one goes over here. The reason we had to drill these out is because they each now get one of these large washers. And we reuse the stock bolts, just put a little tiny drop of blue Loctite at the end of the threads. Go ahead and attach your lower brackets. They book spec this at 1.5 Newton meters. Do it just good and hand snug. Now we can install the upper brackets. There are left and right parts to this as well. The big holes go to the outside and the little droopy part goes towards the bottom. These go mounted on the inside of the lower brackets. The order is screw, 
lower bracket, upper bracket, nut. And there's no thread lock on these. They are locking nuts. So go ahead and do all four corners and snug them up. On these, just go real hand snug again. Torque spec on these is just a half Newton meter. Time for the screen itself. Now this mounts into these cool little rubber threaded grommets. Slip these into the large holes here and what happens is when you tighten down the top screws, which are nylon by the way, do not over tighten those or you will strip them. These balloon, kind of like little shock absorbers, underneath and they hold everything together very nicely without any vibration. Put all four in loosely and then snug them up just watching the underside to look for that to balloon up and it'll keep everything in place. When you see the thread of the screw just peeking out behind the rubber, stop and you're done. There's really not much torque on these at all. You can put your finger behind it to feel the bolt or the screw just coming through. Okay, now we put on our trim. Of course this part is optional, but you know what, I think it'll look nice. And with it flush on the starting end, I've got oh about a half an inch or so of overlap, so I'm just going to trim that to length to match, and that should wrap it up. That is such a better look, in my opinion. I would like it even better if it were solid. It's coming through a little more translucent on the camera just from the slight backlighting here. It looks much more opaque to my naked eye than looking on the screen. But just the curves and the contour, that's the way the bike was supposed to look, not like a praying mantis. That's it, guys. Hope this helps somebody, because the instructions aren't that clear. But I definitely recommend this mod, just for looks alone. doesn't do much for the wind, but boy, does it look better. See ya!